cabin. Wow. A gray day in August? Yes, please. You know what that means. Time cave. Hey friends, how's it going? Well, welcome back to the old time cave. I know it's been a it's been a while since we've been out here. Well, it's been so hot. Well, it is summer. I mean, duh. <laughs> yeah. Big time duh. You know, summer's going to be hot. I just, I don't know. Just kind of, kind of always knew that. Uh, especially in Southern California, because technically L.A. County, most of L.A. County, east of Los Angeles, is a desert. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you still see vestiges of that desert when you're driving from, say, here in Monrovia or Pasadena. And you can go east, which on Huntington Boulevard or Colorado. No, take that back. Not Colorado. Colorado, for those who may not know, well, I'm, I'm sure a lot of my out-of-state subscribers do not know this, but Colorado Boulevard stretches clear from Glendale to... Monrovia. Mm -hmm. And at one time, Colorado Boulevard was part of the original Route 66. Yeah. That's right, it was. Then they changed the, the goalposts. They moved things around a little bit at some point in the 30s or 40s. And I think it was the 40s or just after World War II. I'm, I'm a little foggy on this, but it became uh, part of Huntington Drive. Is it, it's Huntington Drive, and that goes clear all the way into, um, it turns into Mission Road in Los Angeles, and Huntington goes clear out to uh, the Inland Empire, to uh, San Bernardino County. Mm -hmm. But out there, it's called Route 66. But I live only a few blocks away from the Mother Road. That's right. And I like that fact. I, I, I do love Route 66 history and the culture. Um, it is Americana unchanged. It really is. People love Route 66 culture. Um, I love the history, and I enjoy that. But, you know, we, we should do some content about Route 66 at some point. Mm-hmm. There's some really great photos out there available, and I can mingle them. I can sprinkle them into a video about Route 66. I know some people that are authorities on the Mother Road, and I should maybe hit them up and see if they want to do a, a video together. I think that would be fun. Mm -hmm. So let's put that out there. Route 66, um, maybe do an antique car little cruise and put some video into a video. Put some video into a video. Put some footage into a video about that anyways we're enjoying some peter stokeby and my bulldog now i know there's some of you guys out there that are pipers as well and um you've been kind of wanting more pipe content well i'm going to do a little segment just right now i know if you've all seen this pipe it's my k woody bulldog and uh the peter stokeby luxury bullseye flake is really nice and it's very affordable and, and it tastes great and i've been enjoying it ever so often and it's really kind of what I only have on hand right now. I would like to do some more reviews of other blends, um, but my my reserve is really low, so I have to make a re I have to reorder. <laughs> but anyway, it's all good. Um, we'll uh, we'll do that in the future. So hang tight. I'll get some of my other favorite pipes out, and I'll talk about them, and we'll do a, a review uh, of some of my favorite blends that maybe you haven't tried. So hang tight. There's plenty of more content to come on this channel. I'm not giving up on this channel at, at all in the, in the foreseeable future. So, But we're out here on a nice gray day. Yeah, you saw in the start of the video, it was nice and gray. It's beautiful. And it's keeping it nice and cool out here. And it's quite lovely. Mm -hmm. So anyways, what have I got to share today? Well, Oh, this is nice. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, we have something on the bench that you see. The, the towering 
thing behind me. And this is the one of the most recent acquisitions. This is the John A. Hurley Herwood Aladdin Cold Blast. Yeah. I know it's a little dark, but Aladdin. Pretty cool. Now, when you first saw it in my last video, it was pretty, well, a little crusty. The surface rust on it was actually very, it's very minor. It's very light. This thing at one time had a really nice dark patina and it was left in a, a place where it could kind of crust up, I guess. Not too bad, but as you can see, the bottom of it is phenomenal. It sat somewhere and kept, really, you're gonna bring in your trash cans right now? You think that's thunder, right? No, it's trash cans. <laughs> Yesterday was trash day. I have to pull our cans in shortly. Perfect timing. Always something. Always background noise. But that's how you know. That's how you know this is live and unchanged and and unedited. That's right. Well, I do edit things. I won't lie. I do crop things to a certain degree, but it's mostly just us out here. I can't take away that sound. How many cans do you have, people? Jeez. Anyway, Hurley, Herwood, whatever. This thing is amazing. Now, now we. it's been... I know the globe is really dirty, isn't it? Mm. And you know this globe that came with it is a little short. Yeah, see, it's, it wobbles a little bit. But I have other globes that I'll find one that fits better. But I do like the way this is. And when I light it, you'll see why. Yeah. So, you want to move the globe? You want to lift or re you want to lift the globe or reveal the burner? And you can see it now. Watch. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I know, right? It's fantastic is what it is. Um, it really is a great design. Uh, there was a discussion a little bit on the tubular group about these, and someone was asking if there was a spring in the chimney. Because most, you know, cold blasts have a, a coil spring that's wrapped around the inside of the chimney sleeve and that will give it the tension that it needs to keep down on the globe. So when you, when people talk about spring tops, they always refer to the early hot blasts of the 1870s and early 80s, right? Because you see a spring around the, the draft tube, right? Well, in well, technically, old cold blasts are spring tops because they have a spring inside. Even though you don't see it, it's there. So if you want to get technical, spring tops are still a thing. Even into the 21st century, all the currently made cold blasts have a spring inside. It's just what it is, but this doesn't. This does not, it's all linkage. It's this wire here. See that? This wire that goes up into the chimney. It's all connected. So it has to have no spring so it will move up and down fluidly when you operate the lift lever. But what we're going to do here is going to ignore those parrots. Parrots, Rob? What are you talking about parrots? Are you in a tropical paradise out there in California? You have parrots? Yeah, we do. They're not, they're not great though. <laughs> now, the parrots that we have are um, ornery. I would not recommend making friends with them because they are ornery. Um, there's a lot of myths about the parrots in Southern California. One of which uh, suggests that someone had one and it got loose and found another one. 
and then they made they procreated and made a bunch more parrots. Um, the other story is that a pet store burned down, and the parrots escaped and then procreated and made a population. But what I would say is more accurate. What I would say is more accurate to what could have possibly happened or what did happen would be that migration. And these parrots come from south. They come from Mexico, from South America. And they're green, uh, they're green parrots. They have red spots on their wings underneath. Um, and they've come up from South America. They've migrated here. Why, I'm not sure. But they're here in Southern California. And uh, they're very noisy and kind of evasive. Uh, they do, they do do some damage to our local trees and whatnot. And uh, they're at odds with the crows. Yeah, yeah, they are. They they are. They have turf wars. You think parrots and birds are just harmonious little creatures? No, no, oh, no, no, no. They're not. But anyways, we're not here to talk about the birds. We're here to talk about burning tubulars. So I just put some fuel in this. I wasn't sure how much was in it, so I decided to top it off a little bit. And we can light this. Yeah. All right. Mm. Bound to happen one of these days. All right. Oh, not high enough. There we go. Oh, should have lit my pipe. Anyways, so now we close it. Ha ha! Success. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That's nice. I like it. I do. I really do. It's a great lantern. It is. Ah, that's better. That's how I want it to strike. What a nice day. It's a nice day to be out here. Well, most of this month. By 10, 11 o'clock, it's already 90 something degrees, and this garage warms up pretty quick. There's no insulation, it's just wood planks and, and roofing. That's all. Yep. So no insulation, nothing to keep the cool air in, and the sun beats down on it and warms it up pretty, pretty quick. That's okay. We have a beautiful gray day. We've had some rain, which we definitely do need. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing them fly in formation over the or the trees and the houses across the way there. Yeah. A friend of mine up the street, a neighbor and good friend. They have one. Uh they have a green parrot and they're in a cage and they I know, just wait before you say, oh, the poor thing, it's a wild creature, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, they, they saved it. It was, it was, I believe it was hurt, and they nursed it back to health, and they kept it. But it does not like people coming near it. Um, but, yeah, they, they, it gets fed and cared for, and everything's it's all right. But I've never known anyone to have one as a pet, so that's kind of interesting. A lot of people just kind of, you know, let them dominate. <laughs> See, there I go again, going off topic. My apologies. But anyways, this Herwood Aladdin is a really nice burner. It burns perfect. And I can get this flame pretty high. Bring it in so you can actually see it a bit. I know the, I know the globe's cloudy, but you can see the flame is pretty high. And that's a good burner. That thing burns really well. But I keep it right about there. Don't want to blind out the uh, camera. Now, is this done? No. All I really did was give it a little WD-40 wash. I wiped it down. 
but I will do a very subtle cleaning on it. I think it could use it. I think it really can. Um, it's in pretty good shape as it is, but I, I'm not happy with it. Uh, I mean, I love this thing, but I mean, I, I just want to do just a, just a little bit of more rust removal and bring out some of that aged patina that I know is under there. So I want to just do a real nice gentle cleaning and I think we'll be good. But I definitely need to find a globe that actually fits it better because this is just a little on the short side. Mm. A mark lobe? Huh. <laughs> well, the only one I've ever seen was posted by um, collector uh, Russell Smith. And uh, he has one of these. Sim very similar. It's, it's an Aladdin cold blast. He has a couple. He has a, a cold blast bishop and the Aladdin and also the hot blast versions. But he has a cold blast Aladdin um, with a Mark Globe. Mm -hmm. And you think these lanterns are rare? Try finding the original glass for one. Yeah. Now, I don't know much about the Herwood or the John A. Hurley company uh, at all. No. All I know is they were out of Connecticut. And being a smaller operation, they made lanterns, I think, only for a couple of years. They were known for screwdrivers, I believe. They made screwdrivers. Mm -hmm. Now, this is only what I found out doing a little Googling. And I Googled John A. Herwood, or Hurley um, Manufacturing CO Company. Um, and that's what I found, is that they made screwdrivers. And they... They didn't really mention that Wikipedia list, uh, post didn't mention anything about tubular lanterns at all, which is really weird because, I mean, they obviously made them. I think it's, I think there's a, an old brick building in, was it Bridgeport, Connecticut or something like that? I, I, I saw a picture of a building. Now, it's weird because there's two locations, and one was in, like, what was it? Was it Waterbury, Connecticut or something like that? And it was demolished in 2020. There are some pictures of this brick industrial building from the 19th century. And uh, it was it was some listing from a, a developer saying it was demolished or something like that. And there was another one and another picture of a, a small abandoned brick building in Bridgeport, Connecticut or something. I often do it a little deeper and find out but maybe they had a manufacturing two locations one for screwdrivers and one for lanterns I don't know wouldn't make sense would it it's a pretty small company from my understanding and this one I would say dates to 1901 1903 right around there very brief period that these were made that's why they're ex extremely rare yeah they're very hard to find mm-hmm not a lot of them survive. But it's a great piece. I'm going to do a little further cleaning on this. No, I'm going to leave the globe dirty. I just like the way it looks. It, it's really... It diffuses the light. Very nice. I like it. I like it. And uh, some some just look better or right with a, a dirty globe. But I do have other cold blast globes that are clean. Okay. All right. And I'm going to try to see how they fit in this if they fit a little better, because it is just maybe a quarter of an inch off. Now, now the chimney is down all the way. It's not going to go up any higher than that. But, um, yeah. Anyways, we have something else to share. So we'll put this out here as our supporting backup light here. Okay? Yeah. So, first I have to give a shout-out to Jack. Jack Toth, and um, he, remember in my, one of my last videos, I shared a ham cold blast number two that he uh, gifted to me. It was a nice, beautiful frame. I put a globe in it. I had a burner, but I didn't have the cone. Well, I finally got a cone for it. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. How about that? Yep. Yeah. 
Pretty nice. Yeah. Now what are we dealing with here? <laughs> Anyways. Nice cone with the little dimples here. It's got the little studs there for the bayonet style locking cone, the early ham locking cone. And the um, the burner that I have, I, I had on hand, it came out of another lantern. But, um, yeah. So, I still don't have a fuel cap for it. I have a, have a um, what you call it? I have a, I have a uh, cork. I have a cork. Yes. This thing wants to be a little cantankerous here. I have a cork, but it'll work. That works for right now. I'll find a, a, an appropriate fuel cap for this sooner than later. But let's look at, let's get this guy going here. Shall we light it? Honor a Jack and his wonderful gesture. I think so. I think that would be nice, right? We go, ta-da! <laughs> it lives. Another seat, cold blast ham lives, and this thing just does have a really neat look about it, doesn't it? It wears its age very well. I like it. Circa 1905, 1907, right around there. Two big old cold blasts dueling it out here. Yeah, good stuff. I think so. Well, friends, we've come to the end of another video, and I do appreciate your uh, continued uh, support in what I do and what I share. I mean, you support me by subscribing and by liking the, the channel and doing all those YouTube things, you know? You do, and people comment, and they ask questions, and they offer some, you know, requests or whatever of things they like to see and that's what keeps it going you know i do i do read the comments a lot of them i do I and mean, i usually will answer so we're at i'm i'm i think we're almost at 850 or just over that maybe i have to check but you know three's a charm um yeah we're getting there so as i said 1,000 subscribers, a lantern will be given away. That's right. That's right. So, we will have a raffle. Now I was thinking of just giving a lantern to the 1,000th subscriber, but that's not fair because how can anyone else help not being the 1,000th subscriber, right? Right. So we will have to have, figure a way to have a raffle. Or a, uh, a question and answer period or some type of deal for someone to answer and give the right answer to something that I would propose. And then that person, that subscriber, would receive a lantern from me. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you out there have purchased lanterns from me, and you have a piece of this channel in your house or your collection. So that's kind of fun, right? I, I think that's kind of neat. It's nice to know that some of my, my collection is enjoy, being enjoyed by some of you guys out there. But, you know, I will definitely select a lantern at random. No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to be finding something suitable that will be nice um, and usable. Nothing that's a project. I don't believe in giving projects away. No. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Anyways, 
We'll figure it out. So let's get to 1,000 subscribers. And then a lantern will be gifted to one of you guys out there. Okay? So keep that in mind. Tell your friends. If you know anybody that like antiques and potentially would like to learn more about tubular lanterns or kerosene burners in general, send them here. This is the place where we debunk a lot of myths. And we tell accurate, um, accurate information as far as I can tell. And I'm always open to other suggestions. But YouTube is kind of a virtual wasteland of genuine content about kerosene lanterns. There's a lot of people out there presenting stuff that, and they don't fully understand um, the properties of kerosene versus other styles of fuel and all that. I might have to make another video about kerosene. Um, I am friends with one of the Kirkmans, it would be Madison Kirkman, and uh, he and I, we've had conversations, and he's definitely an authority on uh, lamp fuels and kerosene. Mm -hmm. He is. Well, I mean, it's his business. Him and his father, they have the Kirkman Lantern uh, Company down in Ramona, California. So, they know what they're talking about. Anyways, we will uh, try and do a some more content on that in the near future. But I'll leave you guys now. We're at 26 minutes now. Yeah, it's a long video. So enjoy your Thursday. And we'll get back to you guys next week with some more content. There are more things coming. So stay tuned. And we'll see you guys then. All right now. Bye-bye.